Hi, Kilani, how are you? Hi, I'm well, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Welcome. Um, why don't we start with a little bit of an introduction uh, for those who are not familiar with your array of work and where you're from. So, Inso, aloha. Um, my name is Kailani Rose. I am coming to you from the unceded Squamish, Musqueam, and Tsleil-Waututh Nation territories in what is known colonially as Vancouver. Um, I'm from the Clitlitane Nation, which is also known as Prince George. Uh, I'm a dancer and an actor, a storyteller, and a musician. Excellent, excellent, thank you. Um, maybe let's start where, where things begin for all of us. Let's, let's talk a little bit about your childhood and your family traditions and how that's connected to where you're at now. Hmm, for sure. The very beginnings of everything. Uh, well, I am the oldest of three, first of all. I have two incredibly talented younger siblings. One of them is a visual artist. Her name is Tiare, and another one is um, an insane musician. Her name is Kealoha. Uh, the three of us grew up with my mom in a small town, which is called Prince George. Uh, let's see, we're at the intersection of some really beautiful roots, um, indigenous Hawaiian heritage, as well as indigenous um, Canadian. And it's really cool because when we were when we were growing up, a lot of those wonderful cultural values, cultural staples, um, really found their way into our existence, our um, being, our family. Um, my mom learned the traditional family hula from her father, and so she taught it to us when we were growing up. So that was kind of my first introduction to. Um, creative expression, the arts, uh, was through my roots in that sense. And then that whole evolution kind of just took me on an incredible journey, uh, every step along the way, uncovering new ways of, of meeting my voice and um, expressing stories of humanity and um, where I come from, the beautiful vibrancy of my cultures and um, yeah, I, I would say the journey all started with that. And now here we are and every step along the way, it's just uncovering more um, mysteries that I didn't know were out there that um, it really informed my artistry. That's quite nice. Can you maybe expand a little bit on how, you know, you've had this upbringing with music and, and dance in your life and how that took you to your own kind of dance um, education? Absolutely. Uh, well, <laughs> the, um, the nature of Hawaiian hula comes from there never being a written language before any colonization. So that was our way of passing on history and knowledge. And um, it was through dance, through chant. And so I think that's really beautiful too, to see how it comes into what I do now as an actor and as a writer and as a producer of, of of knowing that I represent original storytellers from, from that sense and from our indigenous roots of the Clayton Tine Nation as well, because that's such a parallel that you see between indigenous nations around the world. Uh, and so the, the evolution of dance, if I break that down for you, was um, after the hula came ballet, my mm -hmm. mom put me into Universal's Anshima Dance Center when I was five, and I fell in love. There is something about um, the safety of that space in movement uh, and the universal quality of it where there, there's no language that separates you from sharing that story or that uh, feeling. It's just um, the canvas is so understandable. Um, so that, uh, that will forever resonate with my soul. It's definitely the thing that I turn to when I feel joyful, when I feel heartbroken, when I feel anything, it's like such a release to let my body move. Um, and it's so healing. It's really, really healing. Um, 
And I just, I just will forever love that language. So dancing in my small town of Prince George with Performers North Entertainment Company under Judy Russell was the whole, was like the stomping grounds when I was young. And, and that um, definitely formed me as an artist today. Mm -hmm. It was after high school graduating up there that I came to Vancouver to pursue dance professionally. I hadn't even thought about the acting realm yet. It was all right. just like, I wanted to be in a ballet or a contemporary company. And I had all these big, visions of what that dance world would hold for me. that I was in the city, I got exposed to a lot more commercial styles of dance. So I was doing heels, I was doing hip hop, I was doing cabaret. And um, it was, yeah, it's just, it, Vancouver is such an amazing mecca for, for dance. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful to be part of the dance community here. Uh, it was after landing my first um, professional dance contract with Disney that I came back to the city and ended up signing with an agent, which totally redirected my path as an mm -hmm. artist because this agent um, introduced me and encouraged me to explore this, this realm of acting. Right. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't until that little push and that nudge to like try this new path that I opened my perception of reality to what it could be here for me. And so mm -hmm. I, it was a deal that we made. Um, I'll sign you on the roster if you go take acting class. So I was like, okay, deal. <laughs> why not? <laughs> why not? Definitely, definitely, <laughs> what do you call it? Um, uh, shoot. I mean, why not? Yeah, well, definitely a phrase of life for me. Mm -hmm. So, well, it sounds kind of fun if I may interject here because it's uh, you've gone from this dance background, including your heritage, and also you know, being classically trained ballets, very, you know, way kind of structure, right? Um, in, in how you're training. Um, and now you're doing this acting classes. So when you mentioned the Disney part, I'm assuming that's sort of live performance, right? Yeah. So how do you, how do you, um, do you fear and shade or how can you maybe describe the difference of being like live performing versus now preparing for acting roles in maybe like a closed set or something like that? Absolutely. And in a really immense difference. It's, I can't, I couldn't decide which one is my favorite, honestly, mm -hmm. because they both offer you such gifts. Um, growing up in the live setting of theater, of ballet, there's an energy that you get to be part of, that you share with your audience. That is the best gift ever, I think. I look back on one of my favorite memories of my life to this day, and it is definitely dancing Clara in the Nutcracker with the full symphony orchestra, and just feeling what that, what that feels like. Um, it's, it's something else. Mm -hmm. It's a, uh, it's, it's, it's really incredible. And I think that when you transfer over into this realm of, of intimacy with film and television, when you're on set um, with the technicalities of, of the cinematography and all of that, um, you get gifted with an entirely different set of wonderful things that that really allow you to, I wanna say pay attention to detail in a way that otherwise you, you wouldn't have the opportunity to do. Mm -hmm. um, I love the intimacy of film and television, uh, working on set, uh, it's, in the end, ultimately, you reach a greater audience because you're going out to networks or you have, you know, these streaming platforms that your work is seen on. And that's really amazing, too. But it's funny because in the moment, it does feel quite intimate because you have um, you have your cast and your crew right. and you don't have the audience right in front of you in that moment. So it's it's um, I guess a gift in its own sense, because it really does feel like. when you look at sharing with this art form in the live arena, you get to feed off the energy of, of sharing directly with your audience in that moment. 
um, which is so gratifying. And then in film and television, you're sharing with your fellow artists, you're sharing with your soul in a different way because you really get to, to serve that so intimately. Mm -hmm. And I would say that would be the major difference that I've experienced between right. the two worlds that I, that I really love. I mean, it sounds quite nice. Do you think you'll do, you'll continue to do both if you could? Oh, the live, I, yeah? I hope so. I would love that. Um, I'm not too sure in what sense. I actually know. I, if I could guess, it would be, uh, I mean, when, let's see what happens as, as the world mm -hmm. moves into its next phase. But um, part of my recent journey has been DJing. So I would say the, the live arena for me would evolve into, into that realm of probably hopefully a hybrid show where I get to really delve into this new love I have for the turntables and sharing stories through the music while also highlighting my dancers because let's be real, I'm never gonna let that, that dance background go. It's right. never gonna be a part of everything I do. So in the in in that realm, I think it would be really cool to 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 bring that and share that when it's you know when we can when we can connect in that way again. Yeah, and forever evolving the craft of of storytelling through whatever realm that I can in, in terms of these new uh, discoveries that I'm having as a writer and as a producer in terms of taking the wheel with my own work um, in between the auditions and the process of being the actor. Right, right. So I'm not going to let you slide the DJ part and not talk a little bit about that because, um, you know, it's it sounds like fun. And I think a lot of us dream of being DJs uh, once in a while. So um, so we're going to talk a bit about your film career because we it is quite a bit of, uh, of, um, of interest to me. But in terms of DJing, have you been doing this for a while? And how did you stumble upon it? Or, I mean, how did it start? <laughs> yeah, how did it come to be? Let's talk about that. <laughs> Music, um, as we talked about a little bit before, has always been a part of my life. My family is very much built around um, that, that pillar. Um, my uncles were both fantastic musicians. My sisters are both musicians. My mom has an incredible voice. Um, and a lot of people that I love dearly, um, they're just entrenched in that world so deeply. And so I think it was just a matter of time before it found its way in its own sense into my being. And it came practically because I was uh, working as a dancer very closely with, with some DJs for, for a long time, about four years straight. Mm -hmm. And um, on my breaks, I'd find myself standing in the DJ booth, watching them do what they do. And, and really the curiosity got to a point where it was like, okay, show me how this works. <laughs> and they were like my big brothers at that time. And so they just took me under their wing. They were so wonderfully inclusive in, in introducing me to that world and um, lending me equipment, showing me um, just the true roots of it. I got to learn on vinyl, which I feel like was really special. And it's mm -hmm. this thing about that, you know, that's, um, that's just magic. And, um, and then, you know, graduated to learning the, all the contemporary equipment and, and things like that. But um, yeah, for me, what it is, is, is storytelling through the music. I love when I get to play for an event or a special occasion and, and create, the environment for that memory for those people uh, that's pretty special to me and um what else can i say about djing i guess like yeah it's it's also quite quite special to me to be a female pioneer in an industry that has been so male driven for so long mm -hmm. and i feel quite grateful that all of all of the men that have been in my circle that are killing it in this industry have only wanted to lift me up and make space for me. And I think that, you know, that counts for a lot and, and it's great to represent. For sure, for sure. I mean, many a times a DJ has saved lives, that's what I say, <laughs> especially during the pandemic, you know, we all need to dance it out a little bit, so. 
right? Are it's you on nice. those like, Twitch sessions on the Sunday? Oh, the, yeah, Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's sessions every night of the week, but I also have to do other things. So <laughs> the weekends is where we vibe, at least at this house. But um, no, I'm glad to hear that you're, you're making waves there too. Um, that's a pun intended. So, <laughs> um, so let's move into your film career as well, because we, you did mention it quite a few times. So I kind of want to talk a little bit about, you know, um, you've done short film work feature uh you mentioned your writing so let's let's also kind of maybe go with that journey of you know you did the acting classes as um as that deal you made with your agent and then you segued into acting uh what was that experience like your first experience Oof. um hmm. it was that kind of instant love i think it was because I realized immediately how much it allows you to tap into your personal discovery, your personal journey. Um, and that for me is so fascinating. Mm -hmm. Just like in every sense of the way, how much I can walk through my days and learn more about myself, learn more about how I tick, the reasons that draw me to connect with people, that draw me to connect with certain parts of myself. And um, it's such a, such a deep dive and a focus into uncovering all of that, that um, it was a no brainer. <laughs> I was like, okay, cool. I found a new way into my voice. And coming from a history of, of, um, of turmoil where you know, there were parts of childhood where it wasn't safe to speak up and it wasn't safe to use my voice. That that stepping into a safe space where I could explore that really made a world of difference in my growth and in my confidence as a woman, as an artist. And I, and I um, every step along the way, I just really hope that I can honor that honor my voice in a way where I'm doing good work for, for my community, for my family, for my people, for my ancestors and, and, um, and showing up as much as I can with, with any gifts and any opportunities that come my way through that. And um, I think it's been really interesting during this pandemic, seeing what it brings up for me in that evolution and it just seems to be that next step of of awareness of perception of reality through what i can be doing with with storytelling in terms of taking the wheel and writing my own projects and producing my own projects and having more choice in the stories i want to share and in the characters that i want to represent and how i get to represent them right so yeah it's incredible i feel like you know, you look at, you look at where the world has been recently, where it's at now in terms of just kind of like this awakening phase in terms of misrepresentation, underrepresentation, systemic racism, and how are we as communities showing up for that, making right. change for that. Mm -hmm. And we have so much responsibility and so much, um, opportunity as artists, as actors, as filmmakers to make strong choices to, to create content that, that um, says something about that, that does something about that. Right. And I would say that's, that's definitely the fire for everything right now. And the passion comes from that place of, okay, finding my way into this voice and finding my way through um, doing everything that I can with, with, with that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that sounds quite, quite, quite nice and quite interesting in the sense that um, I know that you've done an array of, uh, you have a, an array of uh, different roles that you've done. So you've done things for TV um, with uh, many fan favorites, like, um, you know, Once Upon a Time. Mm -hmm. I know you did something for Lucifer. I'm just naming things that I, I like myself, obviously, but um, I also know um, 
I just recently uh, see uh, saw your work in the Sinners. Um, so congratulations! It just came out a, few, a couple of weeks ago, I think, or maybe last week. So thank you. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about like specific roles that you've done, and now that you talk about having this choice of where you're going with with the roles that you want to take on, you know, what what's that like for you? That progression. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I. Uh, hmm. It's. It's an honor and a gift when I have co-creators, collaborator, collaboratives that, that approach me about really inspiring projects. And so right now what's cooking is um, we have a short film that I did with Jay Taylor. She is the writer, director, and creator of Within the Silence. And from that one, before COVID and it's just in final stages of post-production right now and I'm so excited because I got to have a little sneak peek at, at it um, yesterday actually and it's a beautiful story that I got to choreograph for play the lead in and just kind of like dip my toes in shadowing as a producer and it's uh, it's beautiful because what Jay Taylor has done with this is uh, tell a story about surviving domestic abuse through the lens of a young hearing impaired girl. And so many aspects of, of this project really speak to the ways we can be showing up properly for our communities in this, in this industry. And the first thing is that she, she cast um, someone who was actually deaf and her name is Haley and she's such a I'm, I'm like a wonderful little human. I just had the best time working with her on set. And it was a very interesting journey for us as cast and crew to um, adapt and make space and be inclusive for that. We were doing um, some lessons and practicing our sign language and we had to adjust certain cues and um, I think there's a lot that we can do in our industry to properly represent and show up for um, the disabled community. You know, we got to look at that as we're looking at the spectrum of um, representing people of color, representing females, representing black people and indigenous people. And um, the disabled community definitely needs the same kind of love. Uh, so so this, this project that's coming out within the silence by Jay Taylor is um, something that speaks close to my heart because it is also, you know, a survival story that I'm familiar with. And the character that I get to play is the pixie who is um, like the fairy godmother, basically. Mm -hmm. And I definitely have had one of those in my life too and wouldn't be where I am today without her um, support and believing in me. So it, it was really full circle to be able to come back to a character like that and, and honor her memory and honor the gift that I've been given to be where I am today. And um, uh, yeah, so I'm excited to share that one with you all when it comes through. With nice. it. it should be coming out this year actually soon. And um, we were so blessed to have the whole works with um, the team that came from the Magicians of Sci-Fi, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. the special effects artists, the makeup artists, the hair artists, like, oh my gosh, they went all out. Like I had the cutest little pixie ears. <laughs> I had like gold foiling all over me and like the contact lenses. And oh my gosh, we just, you know, we were part of the forest. So that was, that was a really cool one. And, and just, you know, the messages that it carries um, rings so true. And, and, you know, that is, that is what it's all about for me. So that, that's one of them. And um, a second one, which is in the works right now, is called Breathe. Right. And it's written and directed by Cody Kearsley of Riverdale. It is a story about um, surviving addiction. And so uh, we are partnering up with the youth from Luma Center to implement um, a youth mentorship program during the production of it. So pre-production, principal camera and post-production will be inviting youth who are interested uh, to come experience um, 
this realm of filmmaking and and participate in the industry and really know that they have a place in creating these stories in representing them on camera and behind camera mm -hmm. in the realms where we get to make the decisions and have a voice at the table. Uh, so that is very exciting for me. And I really hope that I can carry this uh, mentorship program through to any of my other projects that come in the future to just know that I'm doing what I can to make space in all aspects of, of storytelling for um, voices that, that need amplification voices that are beautiful and, and that have so much to contribute. Yeah, that sounds really exciting. I, I've heard this idea of youth mentorship programs uh, within um, the spectrum of uh, independent filmmaking as well um, uh, with other filmmakers who maybe are working with non-professional actors and they do workshopping and, you know, just engaging with the, with the youth that are part of the, the project, whether, like you said, maybe they're part of the project, but it's also just sort of the passing of these skills, this teaching of knowledge, and um, in a way is very necessary, you know, this the same way that, you know, our uh, grandparents have shared stories with us is sort of like our way of sort of giving back to the next generation of, of um, up and coming artists. So um, that sounds like a really exciting program. And that's, um, that's Breathe, right? That's the name of the film? Yes. Excellent. Yeah. So hopefully we'll get to see them during film festivals somewhere, even if it's virtually. <laughs> totally. Speaking of film festivals, actually, yes. mm -hmm. the one project that I did uh, recently, which is out in film festivals now, is called Flimsy. Nice. It is a web series that I created. We created. My partner, uh, Prince Board, is the co-creator on that one. And we created it during quarantine. <laughs> it was uh, such a such a cool process. We're really proud with how it turned out, and um, I think it's really cool to see the the global recognition that that this um, that this dear project is getting for us. We wanted to make something to lighten everyone's spirits, and uh, we all had a good laugh when we were making it. We it was such a such a such a process and uh, it's a story about two struggling artists just doing what they can to, to chase their dreams and, and make it through and keep going. Um, so I think it was, you know, pretty applicable to the time <laughs> we were in and, right. um, you know, finding a way through to connection during that time when we were all so disconnected really meant a lot to all of us, the cast and crew and just to, to see this work being shared through uh, where did we just recently finish? It was the Paris International Film Festival. Mm -hmm. And um, it's been through a couple of more, I think, right? It's been through a handful. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, so it's really, it's really wonderful to see that and, um, and to share that. Do you think it's going to be available wider for uh, wider, I guess, viewing? Mm, we're just, we're still working through which platforms it'll come out on. Uh, but we will keep you posted on that. Yeah, that'd be great. Because I, like I said, I have, I did my quick research and I know that it's toured a few festivals. So congratulations, because it's also won awards. So that says quite a bit already. So I am, I'm hoping that we get to see it at some, on some point soon. Um, so that's Flimsy and it's a web series. It's a web series, yeah. <laughs> All right. So tell me a little bit more about your current uh, writing process and I know you don't have to give away a lot of the story but I'm, I'm just curious about what that's like and how it's going. For sure I'm writing right now with my co-writer Erin Hazelhurst. She is uh, a wonderful mentor of mine. She's the one who encouraged me to pick up the pen and start uh, writing my first script and we were writing a project together called Sunflower. It's our uh, feature film in the genre of drama. And it's a story about a young indigenous girl who's an artist. She's a dancer and um, she survives the foster care system. So we're gonna be touching on the topics of the 60s scoop and the millennial scoop and the genera generational effects of residential mm -hmm. schools. Uh, and she mm -hmm. finds her way home to her family and her culture and her roots and we, are so excited because it's just going to be a very um, resilient journey, a very revitalizing um, moment for my culture, 
and my nation. And um, it's going to be a great opportunity to bring filmmaking home for me. So we're going to be mm -hmm. filming in Vancouver and in, and in Prince George. So yeah, we're in final stages of the first draft, which is so exciting. And um, I'm really excited to, to bring it to the writer's room and to do a couple table reads with it and just really refine it um, right. and find all the ways that I can to, to decolonize this process for me and make it my own. Um, I've been on a couple of sets recently where they do land acknowledgements and that makes me, makes my spirit so happy, you know, it's, um, it's something that I absolutely want to implement into every project that I do. And, um, and so, you know, that being the first step and then the rest, um, the rest will come and, and I know I'll be working with an amazing team that that will be able to flow with more ideas on how to um, be inclusive and be and be um, I was, I was going to say something wild but and and be um, well maybe more aware of where yeah. we are and the space that we are living yeah. in I think yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think I think that's for. I mean, I'm I'm not a native Canadian. I am from Guatemala, so I do. You know, I had to learn the history of this country. I mean, I learned the history of my country, and I was very surprised when I moved here that there was not much available to me in school. So, you know, it is that awareness of you know um, where we're living and and whose territories we're really living in so I mean it's the first time I actually hear somebody tell me about this land acknowledgement um, on set but I think it's the minimal I think <laughs> yeah. you know so it's um, it's nice to hear that there's some um, change maybe a little bit slow but it's happening and yeah. the more that uh, we hear from people like you and other you know indigenous filmmakers and, and crews then maybe um, we'll see things happening quicker that's my hope <laughs> Um, one step at a time and then the ripple effect right that's all we can hope for that's what we can hope for exactly and and we hope that uh, I mean at least my hope is also that like you said in quarantine we also you know take this into stock and and process and and think of how we can be better um not just locally but as global citizens right so it's nice to hear it's nice to hear um so I wanted to not um, end on that topic because I I'm pretty sure there's a lot going on outside of this film world for you so you you're done a lot of these arts um related you know career um what is something that you want to try next that you haven't tried yet oh oof, good question I mean how serious are we getting are we talking professionally or you know it could be for fun <laughs> I would be a DJ right now if I could. I'll teach you. I'll send you some. <laughs> Actually, let's do a quick little plug here for that. Um, my okay. family, uh, the, the the big brother, my big kuya, who taught me turntablism is DJ Relic. And he has an amazing school academy for DJs called Table Tutors. So if anybody mm -hmm. is interested in picking up the craft of the turntables, definitely head on over to table tutors they have online classes right now a gift of the pandemic yeah. um and it is at table tutors so yeah you guys can find that over there if you're interested cool. in picking up some skills uh, but to answer your question mm -hmm. um hmm. i mean oh <laughs> there's a literally it's there's a little <laughs> Ah, uh, let's see. I would say, I mean, one of the things that I'm trying to dial into right now is uh, my chefing skills. I'm getting decent in the kitchen, so I really am excited about that undertaking. Um, I, what else? Hmm. I would say, like, that's probably the most, you know, the forefront thing. I have, I have, um, some wonderful influences in my life that are really conscious of, um, you know, health in that sense. Mm -hmm. uh, I should shout out Baby You, DJ Baby You, um, who is a vegan friend of mine and has a wonderful podcast about that. Um, so it's cool to just kind of be aware of how we're living, how we're eating, how it's affecting the world. Um, and just taking charge of our health in that sense. Sure. So that would be one of the things. Um, yeah 
Well, that sounds fun too. I mean, it's also creative. <laughs> Artistically, one of my dreams has always been to dance for Beyonce. So I'm just putting that out there. Beyonce, if you hear this. Put it out into Ready the world. Ready for you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That that would be quite the exciting. I'm sure it would be exciting experience. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> if you've been to their concert, so to a concert, you know, like you probably know what that energy is like. <laughs> yeah, that sounds quite fun for sure. So, um, I'm aware of my time here, but um, I just wanted to ask you. You know, is there any Thing that you want to plug like anything that you're working on I, I I congratulate you again on flimsy because I am quite curious about what that's like um anything that you want to share with us uh before you tell us where we can find you for sure um everything I'll try to share and keep you updated on will be coming through my Instagram which is Kehlani Elizabeth Rose k-e-i-l-a-n-i-e-l-i-z-a-b-e-t-h Rose r-o-s-e mm -hmm. and um I have a new Twitch account for DJ. So I'm just doing <laughs> some live streams on there. DJ Kehlani Rose, you can find it. Nice. Same with Mixcloud. I'll be putting some uh, mixtapes up there for you guys. And um, yeah, Flimsy coming soon. Stay tuned on that one. Co-created um, by Prince Board. All the original soundtrack is done by him. He's a Grammy Award winning producer, songwriter, singer, and it's fire. So I can't wait for you guys to experience that. Nice. And um yeah, Sunflower is the working title of my future film. We're not sure what's going to stick yet, but I'll definitely be sharing more about that once we get to the time of making it happen mm -hmm. and bringing it to life, breathing life into it. And then um, lastly, but definitely not least, Breathe by Cody Kearsley, the short film uh, that we'll be bringing to life really soon as well. And of course, Within the Silence by Jay Taylor comes soon final stages can't wait for that to come out okay. um yeah so stay tuned and, and it was yeah perfect I'll be sure to, yeah definitely it sounds like a lot more to come so I'll be sure to um put the links up so people know where to find you especially for Instagram um make sure they get that uh, name right <laughs> thank you so much thank you that was it was great nice to meet you again you too